when I only had like 20 or 30 head of sheep, I could do everything with the shepherd's crook. But now that I'm up to about 100 head, um, it really helps to have um, a sheep handling system. And so I want a sheep handling system I could build myself for cheap and also um, um, be able to take it up and move it if I need to. So I drove T-Post into the ground in the general outline of how the chute should work. And I chose T-Post because I can pull them back out of the ground and move them if, if I need to, and they won't rot. Then my son Joseph and I put in a second set of T-Post, um, and we try to make sure they're all the same height. Um, and we wanted those to be far enough apart to give a 16 inch gap um, for the chute. So we're using two inch bamboo and um, that would take off four inches, two inches on either side. And so we spaced the, um, the T post 20 inches apart. Now in some places we got a little bit too far apart, other places close enough, uh, but you want it 16 inches because um, that keeps the sheep from turning around in the chute. For the bamboo at the very bottom of the chute, we put a rock underneath it. You can see that rock on the left. That's holding up that, that bottom section of bamboo. And then we just stack the other bamboo on top, uh, each, each layer going around it. And we attached them all with um, heavy duty zip ties. These zip ties have a small ball bearing in them that keeps them from unlocking. And they're rated anywhere from 200 to 350 pounds. Um, of, of tensile strength and uh, that that means they're going to hold on and they're not going to let go and we used a sawzall to cut the bamboo that that seemed to work out really well we would cut the bamboo um, where there was still like a a, a, a knuckle on the comb um, of the bamboo um, this this has a little partition every few feet in the bamboo and it keeps the water out from the inside of the bamboo and so we worked it up uh, each section at a time until we got to about about 42 or 48 inches tall. To control the sheep as they move through the chute, we built these two guillotine doors. Um, and to hold them, we used this um, the strut material. This is 12 gauge channel strut. Uh, we just pounded it into the ground like you would a T-post. And we used strut brackets at the top to connect it all together. At the, we put pulleys at the top of the strut brackets to uh, allow them to slide them down. And my third generation farmer friend told me to put plexiglass in these guillotine doors as that lets the sheep see through it. And that encourages them to uh, approach the door. If they see an opaque door, that they'll stop in their tracks about five feet away and won't come near it. So adding the plexiglass to the uh, guillotine doors is a really good idea. Another idea my farmer friend had was to put this gate at the very end of the chute that points towards the direction of where the sheep come in. You can open it up and divert the sheep into a, like a little paddock behind the chute or open it up, let them come all the way in, come out. Or, um, or actually just connect it flat, and that lets them run straight through. So I usually leave it connected um, straight, flat like that, but I can, I can swing it towards the chute and uh, make the sheet come in. So this is my geodesic dome crowding pin. Uh, I'm also using it as a barn. It, it holds about almost 500 square feet, and for 100 head of sheep, that, that's fine. That's a great place to get out of the weather. You can find these domes at Zip Tie Domes. The, the full kit will cost about $1,200. Well, if you buy just the connectors and cut your own struts out of one inch PVC pipe, it's like $276. Or you can get the download plans for about $34.50. You can make the entire dome yourself. You just need to have a, a drill press and a, and a chop saw. I took the dome and I covered it with 20 mil uh, PV plastic uh, for a covering. Um, and then I have a um, woven wire fence around the outside of the dome that kind of keeps the animals in. And then I made a, a door uh, that I can, um, out of PVC pipe, that I can close together and like take a carabiner and, and close the door together so it will lock the animals inside. 
I put a creosote post in the very center of the dome so I could um, uh, attach two different gates to it. Uh, I covered the post with a chicken wire because I'm trying to get my organic certification and the animals can't be allowed to, to chew on creosote. Here are the two gates I put on either side of the post. I also put like inch and a half pipe inside of a, a two inch piece of PVC pipe and that makes it stronger. Uh, the gates are 10 feet long and the diameter of the dome is 25 feet so it's really like 12 and a half feet it's got to cover so I extended this pipe out there and put some uh, woven wire on it to help make the connection. Uh, that right there is a, a place where I put the, um, the, the minerals for the sheep. And then at the end, I have some extra um, woven wire that I hook up with, um, with a carabiner that actually keeps the sheep from getting around the edge of it. The little tiny sheep can get through it. Um, and I, I usually keep them propped up on these concrete blocks so it won't pull the post over. To show how this crowding pin works, it's really better to, um, to look at this graphic. This is the footprint of the dome. It's almost a circle. And coming out of the back side of it is the um, bamboo sheep shoot. And I placed a creosote post in the very dead center of the dome. Off this creosote post, I'm hanging two 10-foot uh, gates that I've extended with some PVC pipe. And to the left of these uh, two gates, there's a doorway that lets the sheep come in and also another door that lets them go out through the sheep chute itself. To get the sheep to move into the chute, I'll move the two uh, gates forward and push them all the way up to where they have to go out through the door that leads into the chute. Once they're in the chute, I control their movements with the two guillotine gates or drop gates. Uh, that way I can get them between the gates and I can work on them. And I'll put in a post and another gate that points in the same direction where the sheep are coming from. And with this, I can open that gate up and divert them where they have to go back into this, um, this paddock right behind the, the dome. So I divert these sheep that maybe the customer is interested in into this back paddock. And once they're back there, uh, I can actually run them back through another door and back into the dome a second time and run them back all the way back through the gates all over again. These swing gates have some other features. By putting a, a piece of PVC pipe inside another pipe, I'm able to extend it, and that locks the, the gate uh, where it can't go past a certain place. So I can lock the gate at any place I want to, and then, of course, retrieve it as well. So I can call the sheep and get them to come into the barn, and once, once they're in the barn, I can push on these two gates and make them have to go inside the, uh, the sheep chute. And just by slowly pushing on these gates, I can get them where they, they, have to, they have to run them into that chute. Now I've got some excess woven wire hanging off the edge of that, um, of that gate. And I attach it to the uh, woven wire that surrounds the dome with a carabiner. And that keeps the little tiny sheet from like getting away from it or getting around the edge of it. I've also got um, some wire hanging down, and that keeps the little lambs from getting underneath the fence. And that's how it works. You know, once you start getting a, a large number of sheep, uh, you've got to come up with solutions. And these crazy ideas about paying four, five, six, or ten thousand dollars for a sheep handling system is totally insane. Uh, my my farmer friend in the next hollow, he told me he made his entire system for about two hundred dollars. He he did a lot better than I did. Mine probably cost about three hundred. Uh, with everything I have in it. And then the, the barn complex is probably about 1,200 plus um, the covering. Uh, but that's a 500 uh, square foot little barn I've got made out of PVC pipe. Um, but anyway, I hope this gives you some ideas and I, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks.